Hey everyone, this is Rocky from WeLearnChess.com and uh, I was talking to a friend last night and uh, of course we were talking about chess and um, interesting topic came up uh, about the rules of castling uh, something that can be easily overlooked so I wanted to uh, share this on the blog too because it uh, doesn't always come up in games but it, it can and it actually just came up in one of my games like immediately the day after we were talking about it uh, not on purpose either, so I actually play this game on um, on Chess Cube. I actually don't really like playing that much on Chess Cube, but I use it to have, like, I try more stuff out because I don't really care about my rating on the site, so I just, uh, you know, try different stuff out. I just, I find it's really buggy, especially on Chrome. If you play Chess Cube on Chrome, it's, like, constantly logging you out during Blitz, or you have to refresh. Uh, the interface is just, I don't know, I find, like, it's more annoying to do pairs of games. Uh, it's less reliable. And I actually, on another account, I got up to like 80-something experience points, and or 80-something experience level. And uh, they gave me like a free trial <laughs> of their premium service. And you couldn't even watch any of the videos. I like, whatever it was, it was on, I tried it on different browsers, and I emailed them about it, and they just didn't help me. So, I don't know. It was like, maybe if somebody has a premium membership and they like it or something, you can leave a comment and let me know, you know. But, um, I don't know, I just found that. The content is way better on chess.com. The interface is better. Just everything's better. So I'm totally a proponent of them. Uh, but anyway, so what I did was I just grabbed this PGN here. And uh, you copy it. And you go into live chess. And then it, when when you choose your um, uh, the time for the game, like instead of like 10-0 or 15-0, at the end of the drop-down list, there's one that says analysis. So you go to analysis. And then you click PGN. And you paste in your PGN. And uh, you can do your analysis here, which is pretty cool. So, uh, so we'll take a look at it this way. And I was playing this guy. Um, I had just played him a couple times, and like he's one of those people like who refuses a rematch. Which you know you don't have to accept a rematch, but uh, he ref the, the first game we played, like he was totally destroyed, and he won on time. And then he just ran away, like a little punk. So uh, <laughs> we both hit you know the seek, and he got auto paired with me anyway. And I absolutely love that when somebody like runs away like a little punk, they get auto paired anyway, and then I just totally crushed him. Uh, and then he did it a second time. <laughs> he ran away. I think he said something in a second time because um, I was trash talking a little bit. I mean, you got to trash talk somebody who's who's running away. So, uh, you know, then he said something, ran away, and then he got auto paired again. He didn't abort it, and then he got uh, crushed again. <laughs> so I absolutely love crushing people like that. But anyway, he played this um, Alakines, El Yokins, El Yokins defense. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Never been able to say that correctly. I should look that up, though. Anyway, uh, yeah, he played, uh, yeah, Knight B4 is just weird. I've never actually seen that. It's, uh, pretty sure Queen A4 is the refutation, computer approved. Um, followed by this sequence here, and we, in our first game, he actually, <laughs> actually caught me on this, where, uh, he made it a lot trickier than it had to be. I mean, he was still down too much material, but, uh, I forgot to protect C2, I mean splits, right? But anyway, this game, I didn't let him get away with this nonsense, so, um, yeah, here, I, I don't know what, maybe he wants to castle queenside real quick and just, uh, thinks that the sacrifice material is going to work here. He has to take back with the knight, of course, but, uh, for some reason he took with the queen, so I'll take another, take another knight. So I've got two here. Uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky here. I mean, I thought he was going to play this check, but, uh, but this is actually... Although it's not related to the main topic of this video, which I promise I'll, <laughs> I will get to in a second. Um, there's some games where if you get caught in an opening trap, or if it's even like a main line, like in some of the Scotch games or Geoco Piano games, there's there's a line or two where you have to allow a check. And uh, in those cases, you want to um, be careful not to block with your bishop that's protecting your g-pawn. So if you block with this bishop, then obviously... This uh, G-pawn's undefended, and the same thing if you're on the black side with the pieces, and you, uh, which is usually what would be the case in those games that I just mentioned. Uh, of course, then um, you know, then you would wouldn't want to block with your dark square bishop. So uh, here it just makes sense to block with e th bishop e3 here, uh, just protecting the pawn. And uh, of course, the other benefit of the blocking with this bishop, or in black's case, it would be the light square bishop, is that it's usually protected by your f-pawn. So uh, okay, so a little sidebar there. Uh, here, I don't really know what he was doing. I mean, that seems too slow. Like, if you're going to sack both your knights, and, um, you know, I'm not really sure what the best move is anyway. But uh, you got to try to keep the initiative going. So that gave me sort of a, 
uh, a move here and uh, probably you know I, you don't have to take that you could just develop like bishop e2 probably would have or not bishop e2 i'm sorry uh, probably move the knight out first um okay so he castles uh long here and this is the point of the video that i wanted to bring up where uh, my friend and i were talking about castling and uh it's known by most players that you, it's a basic rule that you can't castle through check so it looks like at first glance that you can't castle long here as white and um you actually can because your king actually never went through the checking squares so um you know, if the, if the queen had been on the dark square diagonal, then the, the king couldn't pass through. Yeah, the rook can pass through check, but the king can't castle through check. So I think sometimes people say it wrong. Like they say, you can't castle through check, but it's really that the, you know, when you castle, the king can't go through check. So um, I castled here. It's a, <laughs> it, there's a reason that this doesn't come up very often. One is that it almost always happens on the queen side. I, I, have, I have seen it once in a while on the king side, but, you know, I guess your g-pawn has to be missing, and it's... It's usually a totally wacky position if that happens. Um, so, you know, a lot of games, you know, whatever it is, 90% of games, people are castling kingside. So that's one reason you don't see this come up too often. Another reason is that, you know, I think a lot of people see this and they just kind of like immediately assume they can't castle. Uh, so you don't see it for that reason sometimes. And then uh, another reason that you don't see it is because even if you do know that you're allowed to castle, a lot of times it's a pretty dangerous idea to castle this way because if your king can't move or like whenever you castle long you usually want to be able to make them on you know maybe not your next move but somewhere in the near future you want to be able to move your king over to either b1 or b8 just to be able to protect the a pawn and just be able to hide and the on the a file if needed um, but when you castle this way you know in this matter that i've shown here then you're ever not really ever going to be able to move your king over without further weakening your structure like maybe b3 or something but that would be leave you wide open so you leave yourself open to some crisscross uh like scissors mates uh so you have to be really careful but here um not only am i up a lot of material but i had a concrete idea of how i was gonna you know protect myself here and the reason is that now that the rook's on the d file it's gonna let me play bishop d3 with the tempo on the queen so um you know, I just had that idea in mind, but you'd have to be careful. I mean, you can see that the <laughs> there's a couple mate squares here on C2 and B1, and the, the knight's the only piece that has those squares. So um, you can imagine, and this is the next move here, which is logical, of course, is to, you know, put a uh, put pressure on X-ray the knight here that's protecting the mate squares. And actually, I could have just played uh, the queen B5 here, among other moves, because if he takes this now, then um, now I do have bishop D3 with a tempo, and... You know, if he tries to hold on to his bishop, for example, actually have another intermezzo move here, just knight d4, and you know he's going to lose his bishop anyway. So I'm not really sure where he would have to put his queen. He probably may just have to give up the bishop immediately, and then if that happens, he's giving it up with check. So let's just say I don't really know where he should go, but um, you can take this with check. I've got a queen check here if I ever need it. Um, I'm going to be able to take this this bishop back. Um, actually, maybe it would have been interesting to have my queen on a4 for that reason, so that when I take this back, he can't take back with check here. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, but maybe I would just take the bishop, I'm not really sure, but it's all, there's probably a lot of uh, good continuations for white. So anyway, we were playing blitz, and um, I didn't think that far ahead. I just played sort of this tactical continuation, which is uh, much worse. I mean, it's still, white's still ahead but there wasn't really a reason to allow this uh and then i'm not really sure what's best here for black but it's pretty much all losing to some degree one degree or another um he took here just because he thought was with the check but uh he forgets that at the end i'm getting a check as well so um this comes with check too so he's gonna uh lose too much material here and then you know the rest of the game is just you know, kind of silly but i guess he was uh <laughs> he was mad or something i don't know but uh he, uh, he's a weak little punk, so he's playing on time. <laughs> and uh, just like he did win the first game on time when he was completely lost, so I guess that gave him uh, motivation to keep trying that stuff. So, I mean, I don't know. You're down three minor pieces and how many pawns? <laughs> like, another few pawns. And you're still trying to win on time. I mean, that's just uh, it's just wrong, dude. <laughs> just resign. But uh, whatever. Uh, some people are like that. But anyway, the point of the video was... Uh, not to uh, show how embarrassing this uh, this uh, person 
was to himself, <laughs> but uh, it was just to show the uh, castling possibility here. Oops. So uh, you can actually castle this way, so just remember that that is a possibility. It'll probably only come up in like, you know, a um, fraction of a percentage of, um, you know, of your games, and it might not, it still might not be a good idea, so be very careful with it, but it is possible to castle as long as you're not, uh, your king's not passing through the squares there. So hope you had some fun with that video, and uh, maybe for some of you learned something new, and uh, I'll catch you around.